Hi friends, it's me, Cynthia. I'm showing you today some polymer pieces and some strands, some mini strands. We had a little bit of disturbance earlier with trying to get ready. It seems like we weren't prepared. I'm not sure why we weren't prepared. I've been sitting here all day working on organizing. Azalea was packing orders and what else did you do today, Azalea? Prepared for the live. I went to a cat cafe with my friend. Oh, oh, hello, Karen. Azalea said she went to a cat cafe in town. Now that's usually something you hear about happening in San Francisco, where I used to visit Jess. There was like four doors down from her studio, there was a cat cafe and you could walk by and see all the cats in the windows. It was really charming. Hello, Julie. Oh, I hope everyone's having a good evening. We've had one of those weeks that seems really long, yet also short. It seemed like it just, like I blinked and it's already the next week. Oh, hello, Paige. She says, welcome back, ladies. Thank you. Rosalinda says, hello, girls. Hello, Rosalinda. I hope you guys are well rested today. We, I feel like I'm not, but what do you do, right? Cherie says, hi, Cynthia and Azalea. I tell ya, what a week. I had such a good time. I mean, so much fun in California. We were like, oh, we want to stay. There's so much to do. It was hard to go home. Usually it's pretty easy to go home because I miss my cats. But um, Alfie was there, and he kind of took the sting off of missing the cats. Oh, Pat. Pat, this is not sunstone. This is actually faceted amber. I'm going to show you guys. I got this from, I got this in Tucson. I don't know how long ago. From the same place we always get amber from. And I've been going so long, the kids that were there are now helping. And let's just say they're not 100% good at helping. There was a lot of sighing every time I was like, so can you weigh this? That they're like, as they look at their phone, it was pretty funny. <laughs> hello, Deborah. She says, hello, ladies. Excited to see you all. Terry says, welcome home. Thank you. Rosalinda said, had a fun time in the pool and now watching you guys. I want a pool. Oh, hey, June. She says, hi, Cynthia and Azalea. Karen says, we went to a coffee house and they had cats. It was nice to sit down and have the kitties come visit. Uh, that's the best when you have cats involved. That's the best. Pretty much our favorite animal. Oh, hello from Connecticut. Hello from Asheville, North Carolina. I want to show you guys this. This was my big haul prize that I got several years ago in Tucson. Check this business out. I don't know if you can focus in. But these are hand-carved abalone bees with their, like, the drilling goes from front to back, and they're all a little bit different. There's a couple of pieces of faceted amber on there. And then this cat, look at this great big cast bee. Isn't that cool? Pretty cool. And look how, how look at this clever business. This is to reduce the weight. Isn't that smart? Like they hollowed it out. Pretty smart. I should do that because some of, it keeps me from making bigger beads because people are like, it's how much? Because the more metal the more it's going to cost, especially with silver. Cherie says, I wish I had a cat cafe. I, same. Except now, as I said, there is one. Oh, Colite says, howdy, Cynthia. I'll help you when you're in Tucson. Oh, thank you. That'll be fun. We want to go to Tucson again. Hopefully, we can have a show. We're not at a show yet. We were with the whole bead show. We were at the, uh, what's the Pueblo show called? Pueblo. The Pueblo. I don't know what it's called. You know, we're just sort of like, it used to be we were ready. We had our deposit paid. And now it's kind of, you don't know what you're going to do, especially with the cost of everything. Like Tucson, to go to Tucson, I don't know if you guys know this, but it costs a fortune just to get out there. You know, the plane tickets are high. So a lot of times, since it's usually Azalea and I, used to be, we'd take a whole crew with my sister, my brother, you know, and I have friends that come. Maybe you guys have met Eva or Jessica Weasel. That's 
if you get, went to see them in Tucson or come to visit our table, they were there. And now it's like me and Azalea, you know, it's weird, but fun, you know. It's a little easier to manage when you only have one show and two people to manage. It's not like it used to be with like three, you know, three venues that you had to take. You had to have stock for different stock. Now, you know, there's, the, there's a few less shows. A lot of the smaller ones have sort of dropped off which is fine because it, it makes it less chaotic anyway. So anyway, I'm going to get started on this so then we can get busy doing the fun part of the evening. Terry says, planning ahead for anything has become more complex post-pandemic, hard to commit and prices are nuts. You're not wrong. I mean, it used to be you could get an Airbnb or a hotel for pretty reasonable. I mean, it was still high, but you could share with your friends. And now it's like, it's through the roof especially plane tickets. So it's like, you kind of have to save up all year to, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go, you gotta be planning like now. Usually when we're planning, we're kind of like, maybe six months out, we start getting serious. Usually we're a year ahead, but it's so hard to plan, you don't know. I mean, some of the shows that we had planned, they're not there anymore, you know? Those shows, they're completely, they're just gone. So, it is difficult to say, I want to be at this location, and then you want to kind of find out if your friends are going, because sometimes people are like, oh, this person isn't going to be there, and this person, and they're a big draw, and when people find out they're not going to be there, then it, it really hits the show where you're suddenly there by yourself, and that's, you know, that's not fun. And I've been at shows where a lot of the people last minute dropped out, so it makes it really hard to plan, so... Let's see, I see someone here. Colite says, I'll ask my, my bead store owner friend if she wants to have a Green Girl Studio show in her store here in Tucson. Well, that's nice of you. That's a good idea. Julie says, so grateful I live in a AZ and can just drive down. That, Julie, that is something. Terry says, so much. And a lot of shows that end up canceling cannot offer refunds, which is so unfair. Yeah, I don't even talk about that. That's soft, that's a poor subject because I've had many a show cancel. And then you don't get a refund, and that's just it. You got to, you know, that's part of it. You just swallow it. So it really does make it hard to, you know. Part of me is kind of like, can't we just do like live sales? And if we really wanted to get together with our friends, we could do Zoom. You know, pretty cute. What Azalea has? Oh, it's pretty good. So I have right here. This is a piece of steel, and I've been bending this. It was on a coil. We got it at Lowe's. And I use these for bead holes. So sometimes if I don't have a color of a bead that I want, or if I just want something that has a little less weight, I'll make my own beads. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I'm gonna flip the camera around. Oh, before that, you guys wanna see this necklace I made? I made this while I was on the plane. You guys saw me beading. If you looked at my uh, posts, I beaded this. I'll flatten the, the board and I'll show you. But I was really pleased with this. It had the flight attendant was all, what are you guys doing? And I was like, listen, we're making beads. We're making necklaces. I mean, I guess I could have been making beads, but this is more fun. All right, this is my high-tech thing here. I don't even know what you call it. One-armed work thing. And I'm going to flip this camera. I'm going to look at this camera back camera. Oh, there's Yeah Yeah. She's very quiet. She's probably recovering from all of the activities on a Sunday and she doesn't usually do that. We're usually at home with our nose to the grindstone. Okay, so here's something I like to do. I don't know if you guys do this too, but I use these small size baker pans these things here let me see if I can sew it and I have a rack it's called a baker's rack and you can get them at restaurant supply or where did I get mine you know I don't quite remember where I got it but these are awesome for putting if you cut little uh, flat pieces of that Velux blanket you guys know that that brand Velux you can just cut it up you don't even have to hem it and you could line your trays. Upstairs I have them, but since I'm going to work them with clay, I took the, uh, the cloth off. You can also put down a layer of wax paper. You could put down a silicone mat, or you can do nothing. 
which is what I'm going to do. Because sometimes it gets paint on it. So this is this necklace I made while I was on the flight. And I did that thing where I like to line up the colors, which was a lot of kind of a, a lot of uh, nice meditation, just rearranging beads. I tell you, if there's anything that is more meditative, I don't, I don't know of it. Aside from maybe sitting by the ocean, that's pretty meditative. And look at this. These are uh, what you call black galaxy opals. This is rainbow obsidian, but you really need the sun to see that rainbow part. This is golden obsidian. You guys probably know that stone. Remember when this was really popular about five years ago? And I just couldn't get enough of it. I bought every chance I got. This, I cannot remember the name, but these are trade beads, and I believe they are from Russia. I'm not, there was some, my brain is giving me the word Russia, but I can't remember anything about it except for that, and Bohemian. And this is Kyanite, Labradorite, Faceted Quartz, Labradorite, and this stuff is pretty cool. This is Snakeskin Agate. You don't see that hardly ever anymore. This, before it's tumbled, has a really unassuming kind of bumpy texture, like a pet like you wouldn't even know that on the inside it would make such a cool pattern. This is an old gooseberry trade bead. These are modern trade beads, if you can believe that, right here, this little one. That's pink opal. And I think sunstone, mother of pearl, I think cherry quartz, an agate, and trade bead, more trade bead. And this one, here's a trick. I line the inside with those metal faceted beads and then you can kind of see them through the glass. Isn't that cool? There's another serpentine. It's kind of an agate. This I'm not sure. I got this a long time ago. I don't know where that's from. I think it's synthetic. It feels like Fordite, but who can be sure? Gaspiate, another type of gaspiate. There's that shell and these are two this looks like that Peter site and what is that dolomite I believe Christicola fuchsia bloodstone this is a nice piece it's a teal piece but it doesn't have any of the red flecks and this is looks like Christicola it looks like turquoise to me ancient trade beads another one this is a trade bead this is called one they call them greasy Vaselines I know that sounds kind of gross, but um, it's for a pretty bead. There's some more of that. They call it greasy when it has that kind of milk glass quality. And then we're back around. Okay, let me catch up with the comments. Cherie says, that's a nice, lovely necklace. Thank you. Oh, my friend Kate. Kate, I miss you. Cherie says, Azalea reminds me of vintage movie stars with her style. Also a bit of Betty Boot. Oh, that's cute. She would like that. Oh, beautiful. And some furnace glass, too. Yeah, that is good times. Furnace glass, always good times. Mary says, what a great necklace. I love that you put metal beads inside that trade bead. Yeah, you know what? It keeps it from spinning too much. And you get that little bit, if you go a little extra on the sides like I did, you can see it when it moves back and forth. It's just a nice little element to look at. I made another one when I was on the flight, but... Here it is, and I need to finish it. These saved my life. Kate, if you're watching any still, I love you that you showed me these. I love it. This is called a thread minder, and it's a piece of silicone. And you know what this thing does? It keeps it from my thread. See how my thread does? I'll show you a bag. Actually, I'm not going to because it's a knotted mess. And every time I'd work on my necklaces, I'd get a tangled mess, no matter how I'd do it. And my solution was to put them in plastic bags because the thread minder for yarn is way too big. So this works so good. And look, it's not tangled up. Well, I mean a little bit from the long tail. But anyway, this is from the kit that Azalea and I just launched. Oh, Kate says, I couldn't stand seeing the tangled mess. You know, if I knew another way, I'd used tape before. That worked, but it didn't work great, as you can imagine. So this one I'm finishing up. I'm making it a little bit shorter, so it's kind of like for your collar. 
Azalea Kate says, I couldn't stand, oh, she says, she's working on our bag, on my bag, and they are a lifesaver. Terry says, I use the bead along keepers for bigger spools, but those are perfect for small ones. And Nancy says, elastic bands. Yeah, I used rubber bands in the past, but sometimes if you don't use the bag in, or the thread in a while, your thread starts to get um, get that sticky from where it uh, starts to dissolve. Okay, so before I got on here, I have my, what do you call this thing, pasta machine. That is a honking piece of clay. Well, it, I have to do a lot of it because I'll tell you why. Where'd it go? I just had it here right by my hand. Well, anyway. I'm I was making a doll with this sometimes if you use a color it's better to make a lot of it than like a small amount because then you don't have to worry about it like mixing Kim says where do you get those silicone tamers I saw them on Amazon and I just put some in my shopping cart oh I can you know I'm not real uh, studied on the thing with StreamYard. Kate says, I found the tamers on the big box storm named after the river. Oh, I guess you're not supposed to say it. Carla says, hey, green girls. Hey, Carla. So this is some, I used Otimu. Oh, you know, Terry, I'm trying to, you know, I got on that Timu and I Me watched too. the, I looked at it so good. And ha my shopping cart literally has like 80 things in it. I'm not even joking. Nancy says, I watched Guardians of the Universe. I haven't seen that. Like of the oh, Guardians. Yeah, I want to see that too. So I'm, this is already, I conditioned this previous. And I used my clay machine, which is, I just put it on the chair next to me. Oh, Galaxy. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. I see. So when I fold that over, you guys probably notice that I'm not folding it back and forth and back and forth going opposite directions. Sheree says, which clay are you using? I'm using a mix. This is Primo, Sculpey, and uh, what else did I put in here? Souffle? You think that's Souffle? I don't know. I didn't watch you put that together. It seems pretty light, though, to be polymer. Mm. It is polymer. It's a bunch of mix. I like to mix Primo with everything because Primo is just, an, just to me, has a better texture. All right, so this is the fun part. All right, I'm going to roll it into a tube. It's pretty well conditioned. I already conditioned it before I got on here. Okay, so let me turn this. Betty says, hi all, this is my first time watching. Thank you for offering this great video. Thank you for showing up. It's nice to have you join us this evening. I know there's a, you know, if you have BritBox that they have Midsummer come out. So to me, that's, that's pretty nice that people, right now, Azalea, right now. <laughs> She's like, where's the TV remote? Sherry oh. wants to know about clay types. Well, there's a bunch of different types of clay, a bunch, and here's what I do. All right, so this is my clay box, one of my clay boxes. You guys, do you think I like color much? I'm going to open the lid. This is a DMC box for embroidery floss. Now, this is nice because it does not eat through the plastic, which some brands will eat through, like polycarbonate will will uh, eat up the surface so that's why you put something down because it could eat through varnishes and different things so in this box of clay let me open the lid I like to keep them pretty organized I have tins that are smaller for travel but I use these so that I can make very small little sculptures and collages I have I used to make I haven't made them in a while but the little bezels with scenes in them and I used color clay so I wouldn't have to paint it and all these are different bricks they're from different brands and some of them have 
like you can see this one down here it's kind of flinty kind of hard kind of hard to get it out of there they all have that similar shape but I can say with confidence that I've tried the, all of the bigger brands of clay even bees putties that's out of Germany I believe it's out of Germany Nancy says that is genius. Oh, that's that's nice of you. I don't know about genius, but it gets the job done. Cherie says looks like fun, so it doesn't dry out. Pat, this is the type that if you keep it covered, like I keep this cover, the lid on, and I don't put this in the sun, it'll stay good for forever. Now you will have to condition this between each time. If you use it, like when it sits here, sometimes you'll see. See, it's kind of oily right on top here see that a little bit so polymer is kind of like an epoxy putty and as it gets older it starts to get dry and you can see this one is pretty dry here when it does this it's pretty dry right and it can go back by using you know pressure from your fingers and you can kind of get it to come alive again or I have this uh, set up I'm going to turn the camera over here you guys can see this so that's the little pasta machine and here's my little oven I got this one um, one of those uh, you know where you get a lot of things sent to your home and it, it was good it was like $40 they have bigger ones if you're making bigger things but I don't have to put that in my food oven you know people say oh it's not that big of a deal and I'm like okay but I'm still gonna do that I mean, if you still want to use your oven for food, you can always put aluminum foil over top of it, and any of the fumes can attach to that instead of your, you know, food oven. Let's see. Karen says, I purchased large silicone mats. I put them on my work surface. You know, I usually do, too. I don't know what I did with them. They're somewhere around the house. Bonnie says, hey, Cynthia and Azalea and Peeps. Hey, Bonnie. Pat says, great, incredible, great info. Oh, thank you. All right. Oh, Ginger says, many years ago, I discovered a polymer mermaid necklace you made in an Asheville shop. I've been hooked by your amazing work ever since. Oh, thank you, Ginger. Oh, what kind of little oven is it? Okay, I'm going to read the top. It's called Hearthware Home Products, and it's pretty good. I've never burnt anything in it, not once, so I like that. I usually burn the heck out of it. Karen says, mine are the size of a desk pad. I love them. Yeah, it's a really cute little oven. It's designed to put one chicken in. Just one, you know, otherwise. And it's supposed to make it crispy on the outside. I have actually never used it for food, but anyway. So what I do with this is when I need a color, I just take my X-Acto knife, and if I wanted to blend more to make a darker color, could just cut off what I need and then I have a little it's so small right here Carlos is my best friend uses roasting bags that's a Christy Friesen tip and then Vicki says I have something called a UT hmm I don't know that brand so you can mix colors very easily with that and I'm gonna mix this I should just turn this around but it'll go upside down Sometimes I'll just mix it like this with my hands. Colute says, I agree, Cynthia, while polymer clay is non-toxic, it is not a food-safe plastic. No, it's not. It's not. I'm going to get another color in there. I like this kind of neat ultramarine. Now, when you make these clay, clay beads, you can do a few different things. Sometimes I will make them where I want them to be solid. And... That doesn't happen very often. Sometimes I'll just do this so I can get a neat pattern. Now this is the quick and dirty way to do it. There's a bunch of caning tutorials, like a million of them. I can show you some. Kind of like what I did a couple weeks ago, but you know, I'd do a little bit, I'd practice ahead of time instead of doing what I did before, which was not great. But it showed you what not to do, which is put two colors that are too close together that I didn't make that same mistake so Bonnie says 
I'm excited to try making some beads. You'll have, you know, it'll be fun. Carl says, I mix my button clay by hand. Yeah, sometimes I do too. All right, so that's a nice color. I don't want to over mix it because I like that pattern. All right, so I put that there. And then, where did I put that piece of wire? Oops, sorry. Here it is. Okay, so if you get from Michael's, there's a kit, and I have it. I have like four of them, but they're in a tote bag somewhere, and I can't find it, of polymer clay holders. Now, it's a little metal box, kind of like a miter box where you can set things in a frame. Now, if you don't have that, that's no big deal because you could take your wire and set it between two metal things or two little baby food jars, and it'd work just as good. So I'm going to put a hole through the middle of that and squeeze it on there. So now I have this as my bead. Okay, you want to make sure your holes look tidy. This is just a quick way to do this. Azalea has made like a thousand of these beads. Do you remember making them with your, your Lula? Yeah, she would always mix all the colors together. She always the made the ugliest little colors, bless her heart. Brown. Okay. Nancy says, have you tried the clear plastic CD disc holder to roll bicone shaped beads? Yeah, I have that thing. You know what? You know, now I remember I let my mom use that. So she's got all my clay rollers. I just form these because what I'm going to do, I don't ever leave them around. Oh, hi, Robin. She says, hi, everyone. Okay, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this over for a second. I'm going to get a little closer. And I'm going to show you. Usually, if we weren't on a time crunch, I would let this sit and let this breathe for a moment. All right? There's a couple ways you can do this. Now, you can just bake it as is. You can half bake it and then carve it, which is kind of fun. I'm going to show you this. Get them, get them nice and close. Now I have a, a polymer clay cutter. I don't know what I did with it. But that thing works so much better. Bonnie says you have all the amazing colors. I try. I like I like them. So I'm gonna that knife is too big to get in there. But you know, a polymer clay knife is about half this width. And it's good for getting in there and doing like like your dice cutting. With a small blade, it gives you an opportunity to make finer cuts. So I'm going to show you how that works. So ideally, if this sat for a few minutes, maybe I'll make more so this can kind of harden up. Now, what I, what I mean by harden up is that this is still a little warm from my fingers smashing it and manipulating it. So if I just leave it sit for a minute, that'll be a nice, you know, a little bit of a break. So I'm going to do another color way. I'm going to do this. I'll try a little piece of that. And let's do this really weird vivid orange. I would call that, I don't know, vermilion? So the key is to fold in one direction if you're doing it with just your fingers. Fold in one direction. And then keep going the same direction like this and squeezing it. Don't make air pockets and fold it like this. Don't fold it and then fold it on top of each other because it traps air. You want a place for the air to get out. Okay. Or just use your polymer clay thing. But for this moment, you don't really need to do that. But see how I'm folding it? And the air goes out this side or this side. All right two similar shapes. This was a little bit bigger. Now you guys can really see with this plenty of contrast this time. Now if you want different patterns you can do a twist. I want this to kind of look like what is that stuff? Kind of like Fordite. I like the way that looks. So there's distinct layers. Kind of a candy color to that. 
so I'm folding in the same direction. See how I'm doing that? So that keeps the stripes going in one way. Now if I fold the opposite direction, you get stripes going both directions. Charlene says, my problem with making beads is deciding how long to bake them. Well, um, I the packages on most of them are pretty similar. Like they'll say a quarter of an inch is 10 to 15 minutes. So I will bake it a little longer, but at a lower temperature. Now, if you do it too hot and for too long, you're going to get burnt beads. And they'll be durable, but they'll be they'll also be burnt. So yeah, already I can kind of feel that that's sort of it's stiffer already. I'll put that through the middle, and then it's super soft right now. It's like really soft. Terry says Fordite is amazing. So much history to it. You know, my dad used to work at a Ford plant in Detroit when he was a young man, and he brought back a big piece of Fordite. And it's somewhere in the house. I don't know where it is. But it's a pretty cool piece. I would love to put it on my lap grinder. All right. So you want that to push on there nice and easy. I like that kind of rounded off shape. All right. Let's check on this one. Eh, it feels pretty good. So what you don't want is if it's still real squishy, like this is real squishy, you're not going to get very clean cuts. So ideally, the longer this sits, like a day or so, is even better. And you want a fresh new blade. This one is pretty good. And we'll see. I'm going to try and get this a little lower. Mm, candy lipstick. That's cute. Yeah, like lip smackers from back in the day. So if you guys don't know, Fordite is a product that is only from the Ford plant. What it is, is all the paint, when they're spray painting the cars, it pools on the, the shop floor in like a big mass. And over years, over years and years, it builds up so many layers of paint. It's so distinctive that car buffs can actually see what years are represented in the color slices. They have Corvettite, they have, what's that other one? There's another one, remember we saw it, it was from the, I don't know if it was Cam from a Camaro, but they're different ones. Like you can see that the colors are very different. Like Fordite is usually matte or kind of a satin clear colors, but like, let me see, now I'm too, now I'm so close I can't even get in there. Uh, Nancy says, could it be, let's see, Nancy says, could it be cold in the fridge? Yes, yes it can. Kim says, I was going to make some Palmer clay beads with my jewelry camp, making camp for kids this summer, so thanks for the great info. No problem. Polymer clay is a very forgiving and wonderful material. I love it. Never get tired of using it. In fact, that was the first way I made beads, was through polymer clay. I'm trying to get underneath this. This thing is really high or low I mean to my arm and you get under it to work okay so I'm, I'm going to balance this usually I have it flush on the ground or I'm on, on my substrate so my arm is braced against the uh, the tool of course is hitting the top of the phone so I'm going to try and aim it where it's not and I'm going to try and take slices off if it's cooled enough then it should make nice clean slices and that's what you can get. Isn't that fun? Keep making those slices. And then you can save these little pieces to press onto another bead. It's kind of fun. You just go all the way around, kind of like... Like you're, um... I was going to say like you're fastening a stone, but we're fastening a, fastening a bead. And this is pretty satisfying. Azalea, can you keep and make a watch so I don't go off screen? And you can just keep on going, cutting it in, in the directions that is uh, that you like to cut off all the rounded parts. Do you 
inside looks like a cabbage. Yeah, it does. Kind of like a cabbage. That looks really good. It's, it's fun. This is a fun thing to do, you guys. If you've never carved polymer clay, I suggest it. Now, you can do this when the clay is also half baked and then you'll get really sharp cuts and then you can just bake it again. It's not going to hurt it. I'll bake things two and three different times. I'm looking, it's kind of hard to see with that, all that pattern, but I'm trying not to touch it because if you touch it, you'll kind of flatten out your, uh, your facets. You can use the top of your knife to kind of tap it into shape. And for an extra bit of fun, I'm going to try and flatten that side there. Get it. I'm going to kind of tidy up the edge. The problem with this stuff is no one wanted to quit because it can be really fun. You can just keep going until there's pretty much nothing left. Mm -hmm. And then you can just start again. I'm going to get that little piece. All right. What do you guys think? Did that look good? That is cute and nice. Yeah, it came out pretty good. I'm going to set it down for a second, and I'm going to show you another fun thing. Let me see if this is ready. No, it's still soft. So if you have this in, like, a solid color. Oh, Kate says love it. Thank you, Kate. I'm digging now for my pearl pigments. The digging has commenced. The digging has commenced. It's right next to me. Of course, when I'm looking in here, now I don't see my pigment powders, except for, what's this? Embossing powder. It's not what I need. Okay, so I totally grabbed the wrong. If you can believe it, I have more than one tote full of glitter, and in this one, it's full of flocking. That's what this is. This is, I don't know if this would work. You know, it would work. Is this stuff this stuff works and this is fun what is I'll that? show you how to use that too since we have it I was going to say I thought I had that um, whole collection of Perlex powders but I don't know what I did with them let me see I'm gonna... Vicki said I spent yesterday painting metal charms with the patinas from your last video oh fun let's see them Vicki post them in the group Shuri says, could you texture a bead with a patterned paper towel? You could, but um, I don't know how good that would look, to be honest. It's going to be a soft texture because the paper towel is going to smash under it. If you want a neat texture, I have several ideas for that. And um, I think you'll like them. There's one where you can take a, an index card and put... A layer of liquid polymer on it bake it and then use a squeeze bottle and do a pattern on top of that card and that's pretty fun so then you can actually make a 3d pattern after you've baked it if you guys want to see that action you can give me a thumbs up so then I know to do it Sherry says get the flock out done <laughs> no punctuation just get the flock out. Just get that flock out. So here I'm making another one. This is another kind of bead from that colorway that I am. You're getting lots of thumbs up. Oh, good. So people want to see that. I couldn't see it. I can't see that on on uh, Streamyard. It does not show me. It only shows Azalea. So that I just smashed it flat. So you could put a hole in this, or or look at this. Look at this action. This is pretty fun. You could take your little leftovers and put them in there. And then look at how cool that looks. It looks like you meant to do that. You could do this. You could shape it even if you wanted to have a nice shape. I've spent many, many long hours playing with polymer clay. And I kind of love it. So we make mini food. That's the other reason I have it. I like making tiny mini food. But mostly we make beads because it's fun. But that's what I do with the pieces that I cut off of that. You have these, you have some colors ready to go on standby. 
to use this up. Because of, of course you could just roll that into something else, but look how much better that looks, you know, being used there. It kind of has a look of like that kind of china, that white. It looks white, but it's, you know, like a soft blue. All right, so that's that's that. I'm going to put that on this. And this will make it so it's super easy to bake. Yeah, I was that's what the word I was looking for, Vicky, delft. I couldn't think of it. I've been having one of those weeks where all the words are escaping me. Like we were watching that Guardians of the Galaxy and the Grand Master, I looked at him and I said, Azalea, who's that man? I can't think his name. He was in Jurassic Park. But I couldn't remember Jurassic Park, so I had to hum the, uh, the theme song. Maybe that's a sign I've been burning the candle at both ends too hard, you know? Time to go to bed. That's probably what that means. All right. Yeah, and then you know what? I was reading this book about that brain fog, and it was like, don't eat processed sugar. Don't eat or gluten. Yeah. Don't eat... What else was it? It was like a thousand different things. And then it was I didn't like... I look at that. You started listing it, and I stopped listening after processed sugar, which is pretty much the first thing on the list. Mm. And then I was not interested anymore. That one kind of looks like... Basically, just don't eat. Exactly. Well, they said you could eat, but they're more inclined to say you can eat fish and you can eat fruit for your sweet and mostly vegetables. Bonnie says, I made state of Minnesota charms and stamped them with permanent ink. That's fun. You could make canes and you wouldn't even have to stamp it. Okay, so instead of car trying to carve that one, which I just did, I'm going to see if this one's ready. Okay. Yeah, ready to go. When it slices easily, then you know it's ready. If it kind of fights you and like squishes in, when the knife is like making the clay, it sinks in, then you just give it a minute. But this is so satisfying. You could do that forever. It's like if you've ever carved soap, it's like that. And it's even more fun if you slightly bake it, because then you can kind of be like, you can carve into it. Oh, Deanna says, hello from North Carolina. Hello to you too. Okay, so see that, how it kind of fought me? That didn't, that's not ready, that side, for some reason. How that is, that one side would not be ready and the other one is, is a mystery. See how it's fighting? It doesn't want it. All right. Let me just finish that up and round it out. The little pieces that fall kind of remind me of pastrami. <laughs> that's maybe, funny. Maybe that's the way I will make some mini food you sausage. You were thinking about food. Well, I'm food derived. I'm food driven, as they say about some animals. You know, <laughs> like when you're training a dog, it's easier to train a dog that's food that's food driven. Thickness, bacon. Yes, I use the exact knife to cut out the shape. But I used white poly and I had to wash my hands really good to keep it nice and white. Rhodochrosite, bacon rock. Yeah, actually. So if, you, if I had my pigment powders out right now, what I would show you is how to dust them. And that's pretty easy. It's kind of self-explanatory. So let me just tell you. You take a brush that you don't care about. This is not a time for sable and you, do, you dip it into your powder and then you just knock the tops with the powder and if you get a nice contrasting color only the highlighted areas will be will be seen and then you don't have to really you know then it's baked in place so that's how you would highlight to show your facets or you can use the vintage paint and uh, you know and it'll look good. So make a rack for yourself. I'm going to try carving the, this one. Actually, maybe I'll do it this direction. Yeah, if you don't want your the clay to get stained, have a thing of wet naps handy. Oh, thanks, Bonnie. It, it is so fun. It's one of the most fun things. I never get tired of, of uh, carving that. We made a ton of these one summer, and I put them on necklaces. 
And even though it sounds like it wouldn't look good, it, it actually did look pretty good. Yeah, that kind of reveals it. If you have a couple of different colors, it can reveal what's underneath. And if you have, if you're smart enough to plan ahead and do layers of colors, like sheets, and then you have it reveal, then you'll have even more fun carving them out. Because then, if you plan ahead and say I started with pink in the middle, and then dark blue, and then another color, then as you trim it, it will reveal the other colors. And that's always kind of satisfying and fun. We could try it both ways, where you cut it after you've baked it, which is really cool, and it gives you really sharp lines. Yeah, that came out pretty good. Although the busier ones are a little harder to see the facets, so keep that in mind when you're doing your own to use colors that look pretty well done this way. And I have a little buffing wheel that I use for polymer. It's one I got at Harbor Freight. It's very low horsepower. It's probably only like $10 for the thing, maybe $20. And I use that to polish my polymer clay beads, and you don't even need any kind of sealant because it will make it so shiny, but naturally shiny because it's being polished and there you go oh yeah like carved candles oh Heather Powers for sure I love Heather Powers work it's so good Cherie says clay is your mindful art it very you know what a lot of arts to me are very mindful and um, this is just one of them but this is a very satisfying process of cutting yeah and you can kind of see the facets when I show it in the light like that so I'm going to tuck these in to my little oven Vicki says could you use a Dremel yes yes you could you wouldn't get as sharp of a line but it will work so I'm just going to lay these down on the flat one of the flat spots and I'm going to put it power level 7, not high. And cook time, I'm going to go 15 minutes. And we'll let that go. Bonnie says, can you resin over polymer? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. That is a... Uh, but you have to kind of experiment because sometimes some resins will eat through your clay. And that's no fun. All right, I'm going to get a color here. Maybe some more of this that I have already conditioned, preconditioned. All right, Cherie says, how long to bake and what temperature? I would say I'm going to do 15 minutes, and I would say it's at 270. At one point, I'm going to try rolling this and see what it looks like. All right. Nancy says, near a Comey. I don't know that word. I'm going to have to look it up. Kalite says, UV resin works well with polymer clay. I have used it and made little bezels. See, that's pretty cute. It's kind of like, let's do this. Get those pieces on there. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it does kind of look like bacon. Yeah, that's a fun look. Yeah, UV resin, we tried some little mini, and then you get little swirls in there. Oh, E6000 will eat your clay. Yeah, that's why you kind of have to experiment. Don't ever do. If you don't know how something's going to react, then do not test it on something you put a lot of time in. The clay itself is not super cheap, but it's, you know, just make a sample. Make a little sample of something that took you two minutes on so then you don't spend two hours carving a really pretty piece and then you're like, okay, I'm going to just coat it. Always make the sample. So I'm going to wad this up and see what happens. Bonnie says, I have used Mod Podge over poly and that worked pretty good, but resin might be good for a glossy look. You know, Mod Podge, I don't know. I, I feel like... Um, that can come that that's like it reminds me of Elmer's glue a little bit 
and it's not my first pick. I actually, you know, if I can get away with it, I don't put anything on it. I'll show you guys. I have to dig it out of the box in the garage, but it's because it's been a while since I polished them. Yep, you could use a diamond glaze. Like I said, just test it. You could take one of these guys that you don't care anything about, like I just made that in like a one second, poke a hole in it, and do after you bake it and do a test. And then after it's dried, you can look at it and then say, okay, does this feel tacky? Does this feel good? Because if it doesn't feel good and it feels like crap, then you're going to say, okay, well, let's make a note and cross that off the list. Kalite says, Gorilla Glue Gel and Loctite Gel works well. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really use glue. If I need glue, then um, maybe I need to use something else. Alright, I'm going to take a sip of this. And then let's, while we're waiting for that stuff to come out of the... Uh, the mini oven. I'm going to clear this up. Kate says, I use super fine 1000 grit sandpaper and water and sand, sand, sand. Kate, get yourself one of those little uh, buffing wheels from Harbor Freight. Then you won't have to, it'll take what you would usually have to do with sanding like crazy with that buffing wheel. No problem. It'd be done in like a minute. Not even a minute. It's like magic. Okay, I'm going to lock up my box. There. Sculpey glazes and water-based sealers like Verathon work well. And she says, I like the wheel too. Yeah, I got you. The wheel is good. So the other thing that's good about these baker's trays is look at this action. All my projects are here. I'm going to cover this one up with a lid. This is a food, a takeout container. Sometimes if they're sturdy, I reuse them. Okay, and then I can just move the whole business to the baker's tray. It's upstairs. I don't have it handy right now. Marty, don't touch it. He's being very luxurious, you guys. All right. Here we go. You guys ready for some looking at some things? Before we do that, look at this necklace I made ages ago. I'm going to cut it up. Shibuichi. Isn't that pretty? Greg made that. That's a crow. The shibu, see, the metal, how you polish it, has a burgundy color. And then if you polish the top, you get the two-toned color. This is the same way... They've been doing it since ancient Japan. And look at that double-headed bird. And then look at this. This scene is a little hard to see because it's all kind of one color, but there you can kind of see the rabbit. And it's pretty detailed. What's fun is this piece, it might surprise you to learn that it's in a private collection of Ojime in Japan. Isn't that cool? Not this particular piece, because, you know, obviously I have it here. But, um, a version of that in silver is there. Mmm, Bonnie says she has it in silver. So anyway, that's what that necklace looks like, and I did a little tassel at the end of it. Actually, it's a pretty long tassel. So that's the whole necklace. It's pretty long. And then I have one. Where'd that other necklace go? was sitting over here. I was going to show it. Well, hmm. I don't know what I did with it. It's gone. Anyway, let's begin this. I was going to show that and then I can't find those necklaces. It's probably because everything on here is a jumble. So, if you guys are going to fly, take yourself one of these. I brought it out so I could not forget it the next time I fly which might be pretty soon I was thinking about driving to San Francisco with Azalea but she was kinda like nah I don't wanna drive so you know that might be better daughter are we ready? alright here we go are you gonna sit on that side and look? I'm gonna come over there Okay, the first thing up, you guys, 
are these from the same family that I got my necklace. Bonnie, it's a really long drive. It's a super long drive. It's like three days. It's farther, actually it's four if you drive the way I do. Okay. And they're here. I'm trying to find a way where I can view the StreamYard comments from my iPad. Azalea, Bonnie says you need that VW bus. Well, yeah, we do. Correct, Who doesn't? Does. Correct. So these are carved in the ancient way. They are really good, top quality Baltic amber with designs carved in there. It's pretty witchy. I love it. So this one is lot 331. And for $24, you can get yourself a piece of good amber that is legit. I tested everything in the hotel several years ago. So there are different ones, but get that. This one's pretty cool. It's almost like it's, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's like two toned. Oop, they're really lightweight. They have really cool designs on them. They call this type butterscotch. You have those, little daughter? Bonnie says, my parents drove us when I was four years old to the Bay Area from Minnesota. We made food on a camp stove. Well, that sounds fun. Oh, right. there's one more. I forgot about it here. Sherry says, Azalea, look up vintage VW buses on Pinterest. She's it's, like, it's listen. It's painful, Sherry. The it's, ones that I saw on there were like macked out pink ones and... Mm -hmm. It hurts me a little bit because I look at those and I know I have to wait a very long time before I can have one. You just save your money. Yeah, but they're kind of expensive. They are expensive and you're going to have to learn small engine repair. I can't seem to get that in focus. Let me see if I can get in there. Oh, you cannot really do it unless we got that. We have that. to figure out how to do camera like Kate showed us. Gotta well, get we have to just get it. Okay, so that's 334 if you're interested. This one kind of has that shadow like it's... um dipped. I love like, how that looks. It's yeah, nice this one is one of my favorite ones because it has a lighter inside and you can kind of see... Oh. 334. 334. Oh, yeah. Kaliti. Uh, we, um, I actually follow the VW account on Instagram and they, um, they've put out this new electric bus that's kind of like a... It's almost like the... 70s one, but I think they're re-releasing the 70s looking one, like that same mm. design, but in electric, and that's, that's, that's what I would Yeah, buy. that would be really nice. That would be cush. Okay. Okay, let me see. Yeah, you have to learn small engine repair. Hey, I worked on my Mustang. It's out in the front, in yeah, the side yard. Yeah, I know. Every time yard. I say that, some, everybody widens their eyes at me, and they're like, you're going to need to learn small engine repair. Like, well, I listen, me. I had I to. <laughs> I know, oh. I've been told. Deanna no says... Way. When you make the clay beads, do you use a sewing needle to put it on? Um, no. I just poke a hole with that wire, that big thick wire I was showing you. And then I bake it. So I just add it on, kind of smush it on there. And then, let me see if I can get some more. Let me turn on. I feel like I could have more light because I want to be able to show this. These are sapphires. And I've had these. I got one strand. Oh no, that one I met over there. And this this is called berry cut. Grape now my cut. or grape cut. Because they're sapphires, but they're put on let's see. Oh Kathleen got it, these sapphires. I've never seen this cut before. And I asked for it, so you know, there you go. 338. It looks like uh, Kathleen picked that out. Did wow. I do this one? Flip the cut Hard yeah, you can use a toothpick. Um, so whatever you have, you know, if you want to have a big hole, just get a bigger, like a metal rod. Oh, what's next? Oh, there's a this one. I thought I had two of those. 
you maybe a different shape, them. different size. So this is for turquoise. These briolettes. Yeah, the wood. I don't. I've never had any of that stuff burn. There's three more minutes, and I'll show you. Yeah, this was the next one in line, but you uh, one of the old one, but that's okay. Oh, so this is turquoise. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Oops, sorry. And I have two at this size, if you're interested. They're 24. It's a pretty nice strand. I broke it up. Let's see, there's these two. Let's just get them all out now. This one has a little bit less. Sherry says, get some cute little check leaves for the berries. You know, I think that you, there's someone's ahead of you on that. There's a few, two less on this one. It's 22, 236. I think these two are already sold, two of those. Did you see that, Azalea? Mm -hmm. All right, that's, that's this. There's 336. That Is there another one like this? Mm -mm. I thought that was it. That was the last of that. What about this one? I didn't do this one yet. So I have two different ones of this one. These are a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller. Sheree, are those stabilized? When I looked at them, they were. I was told that it was not stabilized. I was told that they were legit and undyed. And that's from someone I trust. I haven't had any issues with the beads from this person. Yeah, that's kind of why you have to have this, you know, you have to know your people and know. Because if you get some and then they say, oh, it's not dyed and it turns your shirt red. If you get a ruby, then you don't ever buy from them again. Let's see, 337. These are a little bit smaller, these berries. I love those little nubs. Uh-huh, me too. They're really pretty. This light kind of makes them look flat, but in the sun, they're really cool. It looks like June wants this one, 337. Sharon, stabilized is when they have um, resin. Like you put resin in there, and sometimes it's good. Like if you have a cabochon and you want it to be a little more durable, they would inject. That's the sound of my oven. Okay, now this is, let's see. Okay, I've had these before, and I'm getting to that part of the strand. This strand, I don't even want to tell you guys how much I paid for it. It was a little bit on the redonkulous side. But I split some. I split them up, and they were between blue and pink. And it's the same material. It's sapphire. And yellow. And yellow. But they were all the same size, so I could make earrings if I wanted to. This is gem quality ruby or sapphire pink sapphire it's the same material but um it's just a different color and so you can see the quality of it here i'm going to show you these are not that great quality these i believe have been dyed and this is something i was not going to put out so don't worry about that so you can see the dyed and here's natural so this is still, I mean, it's usable, but I would never say, oh, look, genuine ruby. This is actually legit, and it has that really luscious quality. And this is usually sold by the gram, so there you have it. This That's is, at a discount. It is at a discount, so I did not charge the full, usually when you have this, it depends, you get... Some places will charge you, depending on your relationship with the person. It's like $2 or $3 a gram. It just depends. Oh, Bonnie says she wants those. Perfect. You're going to love these, Bonnie. You're going to love them. They have a nice big hole. So you could knot them. I know, Kate, they are so perfect. These, I don't know if people will like this, but this is a cloudy sea foam. Yeah, that is like sea or lake foam. Mm -hmm. It almost has green tints on it. Oh, yeah. Cherie says the legit ones are more purple. That's a natural color, if you can believe it. Like, that is so natural. This is another one. 
these are so pretty in sunlight. It's like they have a little bit of a yellow on the outside. It's almost like there's a kind of like a red heart. You guys ever see red hearts? So that's why the blue on top of it is kind of a foggy color. So that's 340. There's 65. We weighed these out and we gave it a good price. A very good price, as my friend says. If you bought the strand of these, um, it's like a car payment. Not even joking. For well, sure. Yeah, literally. It is, for sure. Those it was are like my big. Color. I know, I love them. They are. They're beautiful. They're a close up look. Yeah, they kind of have. They're so perfect. Yeah, I love them. Oh, yeah, white grapes. Mm, that's uh, lot 340 if you're interested. If you're watching this on replay, uh, sometimes people will message us and then they'll buy it after the fact. So just give us a message and we'll we'll talk. Azalea has the uh, email if you want to put that, scroll that under there. For the... They don't need to. It's already on our border. Oh, okay. It's at the top. Oh, I can't see it. That's why. Oh, yeah. If you guys want to send an email, our official contact email is at the top of the border. The green. You can email. That will... Go, That's my email. That will go to mom's inbox, and if you want to email me, mine is just Azalea Ogden at iCloud, or just the contact on the website. That's where it automatically goes is my inbox on the website. Mmm, so this is some, these are almost like, look how smooth and glorious these lapis. So smooth and good. Nice, perfect quality. I'm pretty crazy about them. Perfect. I have one more. Do I have another one, or is this it? Just these two. Yeah. So this is a little bit different shape. They're more triangular. Lot 342, if you want some of this delicious lapis. It kind of reminds me of chocolate a little bit. I'm not sure why. Maybe because of that kind of... I was saying it over and over again. Azalea says it was, it she was like, it's like chocolates. But they are a good color. Yeah, super clean. That's what the case is. Super clean. $24. Ultramarine. Yeah, you know what? I, um, I've made my own paint with this material. It's a lot of work, but you can make paint out of it. And it's, I've used it in earrings. I made some asymmetrical earrings where I put one and then use some uh, check glass crystal in a similar color for the other side. I can make it last. All right, the next thing, I have some more of these. I bought all I could get about seven years ago in Tucson. This is actual purple diamond. And it is good. These are like teeny little, if you can look in there and see that, teeny little crystals, very sparkly, and they're beautifully shaped these aren't cut this is how the crystal grows it's so amazing so this is 346 oh um pat says lot 342 instead of three 341 azalea if you want to change that for her for pat oh you already got it sally says she's interested i might have two of these you guys i'll check hmm All right, the next thing. Terry says, those are lovely chunks. My wallet is grounded. I have been overindulging in bead supplies. Sigh, adulting is expensive. Boy, howdy. There's so many things I want. Now, this is a really good price on this, y'all. This is a Tahitian pearl. You can I don't know if you can see the luminosity, but this is pretty much... You know, we did not mark these very high, like at all. Like, because $24 for a Tahitian pearl. Now, it does have a nubbin grown on it. And when you're buying Tahitian pearls, a lot of times people will say, oh, I want the most perfect ones. Yes, the most perfect ones are really good, but I think they kind of look like glass to me. So... Oh, Susan, this is already someone wants this one with a baby. It has a little baby growing on it. If you could see the color, 
it's beautiful. There's no way someone would think that's a fake pearl. I love it. Kind of hoarding them, but that's, I don't know. That's I just, way. that is my way. It is my way. Terry says, but I'm stoked for the order from last week. Yes, we've been packaging up everything. We got pretty behind from being in California and um, we're now catching up. It's going to take another few days, but we're getting there, you guys. A lot of stuff with, uh, came out today, was shipped today. Greg's finishing up some of the yeah, uh, pre-order on the strands. His dad is the only one uh, making all the beads, so we've been prioritizing pewter over the, like, you know, over silver and whatever else, because he's just cranking them out every day. I keep making him more lists, and um, I'm filling the orders pretty much every single day. So we're getting them out. No need to worry, y'all. But I know you're And not. Azalea will combine anything. If you have an, another order, she's not just going to keep like racking up the unless you want me to ship something first and um, yeah unless you want to ship first yeah unless you have like a big pewter order and then you have like an, a lot order and you want the lot items now i can ship you the one now and then the pewter ones can come later as soon as they're finished being made okay so um i don't have a ton of this of this uh opal but i do have a little bit more it's that strand you know the one that was like 200 bucks you guys remember that from like a two weeks three weeks ago I finally just said, okay, I'm cutting it up. So that's what happened with that. Kind of get to the bottom of the comments, yo. And I think there's about five lots that can be out of that strand. Since people have got the opal fever right now, show them the other one. That okay. There. That one, I think, is right. There's this one. And okay, so this, this one. is this is actually really good, you guys. This is a good this one. one too. This is three forty nine. I put two really good ones in there. Look at the top ones. I know. I was enchanted by those brown ones. So these browns, these are called, it's from Wello, and they are called the butterscotch. When you have that orangey brownish color, I like it. I don't know. Some people are like, they only want white, but I, I don't know. I'm pretty crazy about this color. I have a lot of these beads in this. And I've been toying with cutting up one of my necklaces. Do you have more of these? More um, of the, other the other one, I will have to cut. I will have to look at what is left on that strand. Well, I'm trying to determine if I should take down everybody's You can take down the names, but there might not. everybody might not get it. So you can just take down the name of everyone that's interested. I will see what I have in stock. Okay, so that was that. I have these slices, if anyone's interested. They're rubies. It's um, they're not cut. They're just sliced, which is pretty cool. Uh, Kate and I tried to drill these to make the holes bigger. It was hard because rubies are second only to diamonds. These have a an eye. If you look, see that. Forty-eight for two, and that's three forty-eight. I have these guys, if you're interested. I have some smalls. We have that at 52. I'm running towards the end of this strand. It was a pretty pricey strand, but these are really pretty. And I think they look awesome. I sold most of them, I think, last week with Kate. It's so oh, fun. All right, and the last this, one. No, this one. Okay, Susan Le um, Reynolds says, I've never bought from you guys this way. How do I contact you? Well, you write down what you're interested in, and then Azalea is writing down all the names of people saying they want something. So if you want something, you just put your, the lot you're interested in. Azalea will message you back. If we're out of it, she'll just let you know. Now, if I haven't got, if anyone's waiting, you guys can just give me a little, a little zap to remind me with just send me another email if I don't get back to you sometimes I get flooded out I'm trying to keep on top of it okay I only have this this is the last of this this is from if you guys remember my friend Kia from back in the day you know she had an amazing eye for this stuff I don't know whatever happened to her in the business but one day she just stopped showing up people say she moved to truth or consequences but um, I never saw her so if anyone knows, we'd love to get a hold of her again. But this is, look at this, this is green garnet. And then this is to the North Carolina garnets. 
that were just drilled. That's how they look. I found them myself, and I've drilled several. They find them in creeks like that. Did you show this one? This is the one that everybody wants. Mm -mm, that's that's lot 343. Oh. We did 344. So here's some little ones. This is a smaller one. They're 26. 343. If you want the smaller diameter. How many, do you have some of those left? Yeah, I do. How many people do you think that can take down? Um, I'm not sure. Three? Maybe. I have to look. Because it's, um, I break them up so and then I... See, look how fast the comments are coming in, yo. Okay. I'll just check. Right, I think that's the last of it. Hold on, just give me a second to take these names down. Azalea is writing down everyone's name. I want to show my paintings before it's time. Okay, give me a minute. I'm still taking it down. So Azalea's writing everybody's name down for that. That uh, opals. rainbow opal. Yes, Vicky, I am going to show the beads. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, I'll take this stuff away. You know, we can actually, before we finish up, we can look at numbers that we showed that other people might not have seen that are not gone. Oh, one last thing we were supposed to show, Mom, is this. And we have a bunch of these, and I'm positive that people are going to love him. Oven beads. Here they are. But see this? You could. I need to take a file and get rid of that little. That was just a little crumb hanging on. But now they're really. Look. Listen. Very sturdy. Now I could either coat these or I could hit them on the buffing wheel, and that will make it <clears throat> really shiny. So I'm not going to do that here because I don't have the buffing wheel set up. But I could easily. I have it set up in the garage. Maybe I'll make a video later demonstrating it. And then I would get the crumbs that are right in here. See that? I don't like that. So you could get rid of that. Where'd that exacto knife go? Well, I don't know where the exacto knife went. It was sitting right here on the table. But you can see how fun and easy it is to make. Now you can go on top of this with patina paints after you've polished it or before. Of course, if you do it after, then you're going to polish the, uh, the stuff down. But that looks pretty good, I think. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. We can re-show a couple of things, and we'll show him last. So oh, is that you want to show things, if anyone well, is you know interested? What? Every time it works, because we have people that come in and people that leave, and people that didn't see the things that we showed at the beginning of the lot sale that they might like now. Sh Sally says, will you sell those beads on a website or future sale? Possibly, but for the most part, with these lots, they tend to, I don't usually have anything left over. Sometimes with the full strands, I'll have something left over, and we can revisit those, but um, for the most part... We have revisited lots in the we past, have. after months. Yeah, so it's not sitting there. the so next these, week. These are the things that we left o that we have left over from tonight, except for the very last thing that we are going to show you guys. All right. Okay, so this is three forty one is gone. Now we got these three, the last contenders, and we have one last thing after these are shown. And you guys, you can see that this is the hand carved amber, the sapphires, and the ruby slices. If you're watching the replay, you can email me at Azalea Ogden at iCloud if you like any of these, or you can email Mom, and she'll let me know or forward me the email. So take a screenshot if you like these things. Now, last thing that we have to show for the lot sale is this, and he's delicious because we've never had this before. This is a, a, a first-time product. The frog in bronze. He is so good in bronze, I immediately put one in my pocket. I know. This will come with the book and the the little booklet the, the pewter one comes with and the bag, a stamped bag. So if you want one, it's $36. It comes the whole gift set, but it's just in bronze. 
And this little guy is going to look so awesome painted. And then show him in detail, show his fat little body on the mm -hmm. top. Yep, see? Very well formed. Little feet. Very well formed. Little bun talks. Kate's interested. I'm going to have to get a new page, yo. Mm. Yeah, the bronze is so sweet and charming. Fits delightfully in your palm, just like that. I'm going to paint the little eyes on this one, I think. I'll keep it. I need one for my own self. But look at his little winsome expression. I kind of want to like do this, anything. like this, like hold him like a sandwich. Isn't he so cute? I kind of want one of these in real life, but then if I have these frogs in real life, then I never get to leave. So that's why I have not succumbed to my desire to keep frogs as pets. Maybe salamanders. Anyway, I'm really, I'm really into frogs, y'all, as you can probably tell. I know, it's Isn't that so cute? I signed him somewhere on here. Oh, there it is. Right there it says GGS. But he has a nice little body. Here's the whole bowl full if you want the full effect. Look at this action. Wouldn't you love to just see them all like that? I know, I'm so addicted to frogs for some reason. Yeah. Oh, and a crown. That's cute. So cute talk. A little crown love it so if you guys want we have what's in this bowl 36 he comes f with the little booklet that we designed it has a cute little uh, illustrations in it and then I stamped a bunch of bags that he fits in there is no hole Nancy he's just a sculpture but you know what my friend Kinga you guys know Kinga she um she used the Simbeat embroidery. She glued him down by the paw, by the, the hands and the feet so that his face was shown like this. And she did it for a bracelet. It was like this. So he was tucked in. So that's, a, that's something that's cute, too. That would be fun. So you could just pin him down by his legs. And you could do that. Uh, Mary Schwartz wants to know if they're going to be on the website. There may I be. would say probably not, since they're a limited run. We This is the first and only time we've ever had the bronze frogs. Yeah. So, and we, since we have so few of them and they kind of take a long time to make, I can sense in the future, if they have a uh, Shopify listing, there will probably be some problems. Because some people will order a bunch and they'll wipe they, it they out. they will also not be very patient. The same people that, you know. And they'll get, they won't understand that you have to make them in bronze, and bronze takes longer, so. Yeah. All right. Okay, so Azalea's going to look. There was Betty Joe would like one. Did you get that? Mm-hmm. Keep scrolling mm. down. And you see the rest. Okay, wait, wait. You're still scrolling. I'm still looking, yo. Oh. I need to... Take the notes. I gotta write people's full names, or else I will not remember who it was. But you can ask if um, right, there's there any left on the email. These would be good painted too, or bare degree. This is more of like a little sculpture, but you could for sure easily transform that into a wire wrap. Oh, Sheree, I already have an oxalotl. It's so cute. Um, Terry says, Azalea, I have an open order. Could he ship with that? Yeah, she can add that to the... Easily. She says yes. Yeah, I have to make a, a new order for you, and then we can uh, combine them. All right, you guys, are you ready for the time that is the giveaway time? Who's ready for that? Looks like I'm ready for that. Do you guys have any interest in... I sold these before a long time ago, like three or four months ago. We did um, these like mini charms. So I need to get... I'll do these for, a, for next week maybe. Do you guys have any interest in like mini, mini, mini charms? Those are cute. Inspired. I was thinking about putting them with like this. Like that's the... Thing. I have these tiny tinies. If you guys like that idea, maybe hit me with a thumbs up so I know if it's a good idea. 
Connie says yes. Ugh. Oh, good. Thank you, guys. So I'll do lots of that if you guys have any interest. I like to put those on my asymmetrical earrings. All right, folks. Let's flip this camera around and get to the part of the day that we do. Okay, we're going to do up. Okay, I'm going to figure this out fast. Front camera. Oh, there we are. Okie dokie. There's me and Zoya. It's dark outside. I know. Okay. Sun's down. It's like 9 o'clock. This is, you guys, in second look. This comes off the top. It's not broken. This is just comes off so you can easily wash it. All you have to do is turn it on the side and there it go. Just like that. So I have that sitting here. Selling that oven. Well, I mean, you don't have, you know. This one is uh, pretty good. Let's put that down. Maybe. <laughs> I know. Well, I was trying to set it down, but um, I need to twist it on. There. Perfect. All right, folks. Now, Azalea is going to do the giveaway. She has hidden the answers from me. Because she says it. I don't say the answers. That was only an isolated incident of one to three t different times. You and Kate both. You guys were like... Let's give examples. You guys were giving too many hints, and then everybody got it. Oh, go get my four new paintings. I want to show those. Why not? I want to show it. Because I have to reveal that you're going to look at the answers. No, then take it with you. We have, we've already I gone just want for to an show. hour and a half. Let's show my opinions. Let's we'll get it. Take another Please. 30 minutes. Just like five minutes. Just you do are... this. Just do this for me. Do this for your mother. You're doing See, Azalea, you she's... To get she gets salty when I... Um... I get salty. Which one? Is this one? <sighs> I just want to show it. This one? Yeah. you got to tell me. I don't know. Yeah, the four you newest know. ones. Which one now? What do you guys think? Four smalls. I only have three smalls. Kate says, bye friends. Have a great Sunday evening. This is what I worked on. This is my painting. That's one of my paintings. I did this in... Kate, you probably remember that in your dining room. Rooted to Mother Earth. That's my um, tribal one. That's one. This is for, remember I was telling you all about the show that's going to take place? It's getting down to the wire. Here's another one. Isn't that cute? She's like, she's, uh, something's happening. Can't tell if I'm on the screen or not there. I can kind of see. There's another one. These are painted on these boards. I believe it's poplar. You guys remember my love for the bird girl? It, it goes forever. Ever since I learned about that, that in ancient Egypt, they left a hole at the top of the pyramid for Ba, the symbol of the soul, to fly out of the pyramid. And you know what it was? It was a person's head. It was your head on the body of a hawk. And I don't know, that just, I really liked that idea. I loved it. So here you go. What do you think about that? There's four new paintings. I just have a stack of, oh, how many more to go, Azalea? Like six. Okay, now go. You can do the thing. While well, she casually eats a piece of chocolate. Thank you, you guys. People said awesome painting. Cindy right. said it. They liked it. Bonnie liked my look, too. Hey, you guys. All right, we're gonna get. So we're this. gonna do this like we usually do. There's three rounds. Uh, you guess each thing, and the person that guesses the thing that I've looked at first, or the thing that I've written first, will win a twenty dollar gift card. And you can we'll, use that. So we're gonna give out three separate twenty dollar gift cards to people. And if you win one, Pat, don't, uh, don't guess a second Pat. time because you can't have two giveaways in one week. Oh, Cherie says, it's how did there. your kitty finish up? Oh, that's over there. I'll show you guys. I'm going to do a little bit more. But I should use last week. You'll see it. I have, at now I have one, two. I have like eight. Okay, now what's the first thing we're doing, Azalea? An animal. Go. Guess. An animal. 
And if you guys don't get it within like a minute or two, I'll give you a hint. One singular hint. Sharon, from me, not Sharon her. says, are you selling the paintings? I bought two of Andrews. Yes, I am paint I am selling them. But I'm selling them through my friend's her wine bar. So I have to wait until then, I think, you know. You see all these things coming in? They're coming in fast. I'm reading them as fast as I can. So many, it's, they're coming in very fast. A lot. Let's go back down. Let me do it. Oh. <laughs> I did see a bear the other day. The Why? answer is not bear. I'm just saying about how I saw a bear. But that's not unusual here in Asheville. There, there are bears pretty much. Every time you turn your face, there's a bear. There's actually a path around our house that the bears mm. have Teresa Kelly. stepped their feet. Wolf. Teresa Kelly with Teresa. wolf. Teresa. So you can, I've had people ask this question. And you can use your card. It's through Shopify. So if you want to use it on this, you can use it on this, or you can use it on the website, because she's going to send you a Shopify invoice. Shopify invoice is good because it has the tracking already, and I can do I can do coupons, mm -hmm. just like we're going to do right now. Shopify so, is just the best website thing for us. So weird. round one winner was Teresa Kelly with the answer of Wolf for All Andy. right. All right, that's the first $20 gift card done. One down. That's the first time I saw anybody comment Wolf. Okay, okay, so we have another two. The next Round thing. two is your guys' favorite, which is a color. And she didn't pick the color, so it's not going to be as wackadoodle. I picked the color. But I'm not going to give you any hints about the color, because if I say, oh, it starts with this letter, then you're going to immediately know over. what it is. Then it's over too fast. Because there's like one color that I can think of that has that letter. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Moose. <Yeah. laughs> That's probably because, you know, sometimes it doesn't come in all the way at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a, a lag. I said it was wolf, and then she said yeah. a wolf. I she, saw Azalea, wolf on if, another if one. It's, listen, if it's, um, their internet doesn't mm -hmm. have the same one, then they're not going to come in at the same time. They come in a little bit. I think that there's something to do with the internet. I probably look pretty funny right now, staring at this thing. So you guys look at mom while I read these answers. You guys, mm. uh, I woke Connie, up with tons of hives, but I Connie managed to get, with I magenta. Managed to get them under control, so then you guys We're didn't have to see the, me. We're talking about the the giveaway like, right now. Azalea gets so embarrassed by hives. Well, talk. I'm it's, trying to talk about the giveaways because what everybody's doing right now, and then you're talking about your hives. Well, when I saw the word magenta, it made me think of my made hives. me made you think of your colorful. Okay, but round two, <laughs> the answer was magenta. And the first person I saw comment magenta was Connie. Thank you, Connie. Connie, you have the round two winning $20 gift card that you can use anywhere you want on our website. Yeah, and good job. You know what, Connie? It looks like... No, you did not... I did not get you down to bid for anything, but you can use that wherever you want on your next order. All right, the third and final round, you're not supposed to look, is a flower. You guys guess some flowers. What gave me hives, you know, Anne? I think it's stress. It used to be food coloring, but then I got this book and it said how to cure your hives all by yourself without drugs. And it was like another huge long list of things you're not supposed to eat. You know, you're not supposed to have fried food. You're not supposed to eat like brown food. Um, because it has these, it causes glycotoxins to release in your bloodstream, which is your body treats like, you know, it treats it with inflammation. And that's my problem is inflammation. It's probably stress, you know. I had kind of one of those weeks where, like, I had two friends die in the span of two days. Well, one friend didn't. I just found out about it that time. So that was kind of a drag and made me feel kind of uh, lackluster is a good word for how I was feeling. Kind what of people uh, are commenting, Azalea? Kind of, uh, you know that feeling when you're feeling kind of, you know, dusty and, like, I don't know. Like, right. I needed to go out in the woods and sit in a creek. Mm. And I did, and I didn't see mm. any salamanders. It was one of those, uh, not as good. And then, you know what, the other day, 
over the weekend. There were so many people around Asheville, you guys. It was like, I didn't know what happened. I went to my, one of my secret places, and there were cars up and down the road. Oh my gosh, That's there's so I knew many comments. That I probably need to buy property so that um, I don't have to like be around. I mean, it's not like I'm a hermit or anything, but sometimes when there's a lot of people splashing around and you're trying to you know, you're trying to, like, think of some interesting painting ideas. It can be, it can be challenging. Okay. I just saw it. There are Go so many, up. Zalia. They're coming in so fast. Cindy! Cindy Hourhand with Cherry Blossom. That oh. was the answer. I was about to give you guys the hint, but she got it. And I didn't see anybody else comment Cherry Blossom before that. So, the third winner, the third round winner of the $20 gift awesome. cards this weekend is Cindy Hourham. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you guys for playing with us. I know Thank you guys you like playing the game. sticking around for, what does it say, an hour and 35 minutes. I know. Man. We did our three rounds. We had animal, wolf, color, magenta, and flower, cherry blossom. So and our animal, winners... Animal, vegetable, and mineral next time. Animal, vegetable, <laughs> vegetable. Okay. Teresa Kelly, Connie Pasternak, and Cindy Hourham. You guys are the winners this weekend. Good job. Good job, Yay. guys. That's what I was thinking about. All right. Let's see what's happening here. I see new comment sign. Hellebore. Yeah. I would have picked that. June says, thank you. Thank you, June. We miss you. We, we miss do. You, we miss you, June. Remember in Tucson? Yes. Kept saying, June is so cool. Let's go to her house. Let's go have a craft at June's house. Cindy says, thank you. Yes. Thank you, everyone. You guys Bonnie, have a they wonderful are psychics. week. The psychic <laughs> is Pat Moore. Pat Moore is good at guessing. Or mm -hmm. Either that or she just knows us really. Like, she knows what, she I'm, knows what I'm thinking about. She done that. And some of that stuff was pretty random when she picked. She picked it twice. I know. I was like, I tried to be, I tried to make this difficult. And she mm. still got it. What the heck? Oh, Vicky says we should all have an online crafting session. We were talking about that, having a... A crafting session if you guys are interested put it in the group and tell us what you think how we should do it should it be like we all meet you guys want to come over we'll have a crafting night we'll do that we're not they get to come to the house come on over we'll clean off the table it'll only take me like two hours but i'm game or we could do one that's like what do people do anymore well how sometimes they do zooms we'll do that too I'm not really, uh, I don't really know how to do that myself, but I think Azalea, she knows how to do a Zoom. Yeah, you could, you could just start a meeting and then you, and you send people the invite link. Okay, so we're going to do that. You guys put it on the, in, on the, that, that group that we're in. I'm not real tech savvy. You guys probably already figured that out. Yeah, Azalea, she's trying to keep a straight face like mom. I can check my email, y'all. And I know how to put a thing on Etsy. But you guys go ahead and you can put the time and then we'll all like vote for the best time so that everybody gets to enjoy. And then we will, uh, I like you, Cindy. Vicky says tea and biscuits. That sounds good. His arms are fat. Yeah, arms. that's, now she's got me in the mood to watch Father Brown. I thought I was cured of it. Tea we and watching scones. Scones, Mrs. strawberry McCoffee. scones. So she we can so have, that. we'll have all kinds of, uh, We'll have a kind of beverage. Maybe what we'll do is we'll say, hey, everybody, let's make the same kind of tea together. You know, we'll do that. We'll have tea, we'll have something, and then you guys can show us what time is good. Then we'll all get together. What do you say, in like a couple weeks or so? We'll do that. Oh, Doc yeah. Martin. You do watch oh, Doc Martin. That's another beloved show We kind of took a break from it because I don't like Louisa. She gets on my very last nerve. She's not a fan of Louisa I'm for not, some reason. I'm not a Louisa fan. I think Constant Martin is funny, tea. and she's just like purple. Always PT. getting in there to make to criticize. Make she's always criticizing. That's she reads Isaiah into said. everything, and she's gonna get Vicky upset loves about Louisa. anything. As I is like, she should just no. be. No. She should stop finding fault. She finds oh, fault in everything. Sharon says, "Watch Endeavor." I think I've seen. I've seen some trailers for that. Yeah, I don't like Louisa. <laughs> she's the worst. Oh. Listen, Sally, Midsummer Murders are is that's our comfort show. That's our that's go to the comfort. We we, will, we, we have already drained that. We've watched the entire show all like twenty two seasons 
like several three times. times several That's times. why that can't we, that can't be our go-to show anymore because we like we're waiting for new stuff to come out. We've watched Nancy. it so many times. I don't times. think I watched that. Oh, we like she's the, a negative Nelly. Yeah, Karen. You know who else is a negative Nelly? What's that show we were watching? Death in Paradise. The new inspector. I tell don't me, like you guys. Neville tell me Parker. honest opinions he about that. He sucks. The... Azalea, you, what if he's watching? You're going to hurt he, his feelings. You suck. <laughs> he's you, you not know what? You know what? It's the writers. It's the writers that do Okay. That. Yeah, it is the well, Happy we're Valley. About the intense. Anger dances. Happy Valley. I think I watched that one, and that is intense. That is a, an intense one, but I love that one too. I pretty we pretty much you know if it's a British murder mystery if it's not too dark we like Vera watched it. we watched Vera but we had to take a break because it was too upsetting I had to go and like you know go breathe real hard outside because go it was, breathe real hard it was too much Vera is just too realistic oh it's... Carlos is night y'all got to go help the hubs pull up the rest of the auto <laughs> okay I'm not sure what that means. I like uh, Dal Gleesh. That's a really new one. It takes place oh, in the sure 70s. Oh, sure. It says B.O.B. and Make Art. Perfect. Let's do it. Do you watch Miss Scarlet and the Duke? Miss well, I haven't Scarlet. seen that. Miss Scarlet. We've, no. watched, we've watched Father Brown, Sister Boniface, Midsummer Murders. Love that one. We like Vera. We Death like Dal Gleesh. Uh, Death in Paris. I really like Dal Gleesh because I like that actor. And Gardan says Fleabag. I haven't seen that one. I've seen a lot of... Uh, clips about that and it looks cute. It does look cute. And you're a little bit sad. But Read I like the it. Ruth Galloway series. Okay. Now my book on tape thing. Everybody's is... leaving because now we're just talking about British shows. Downton Abbey, of course. We've watched all of Downton Abbey, but of we course. didn't watch the newest movie yet. Oh, I we gotta get in on this. I'm seeing a lot of people say Miss Suggesting. Sarah. Um, well, I'm not, you know, that, you maybe guys, I need to start taking notes that. Let's do a post of Gilded Age. I want to watch that one. Which is the one with Kenneth Branagh? I think that was Murder on the Orient where he played Poirot. He was pretty good Poirot, but... <laughs> Nancy, uh, Outlander we watch is... On, how do we watch? We watch it on Amazon. What? All of these Brit Box, it's all on one thing. So. Brit Box, and we have signed up for like Brit Box and PBS and Acorn. Masterpiece. Masterpiece. Sometimes, sometimes we turn them off if we finish a show or if they're making us wait a really long time, but they all connect through Amazon, so that's how we mm -hmm. watch that. Nancy asks Outlander, and I started watching that with my friend Lily, and then they got to that one part with Jamie at the prison, and I was like thoroughly traumatized, oh, and yeah, I haven't watched little, it since. I was like, they're bit. showing me. The They're same traumatizing event over and over. So you can relive it, that's why. I, I was I'm like, too I, sensitive. Yeah, I like things I that like are a little less visible. I like the beginning of that show. I like the beginning. I love Jamie. He's very sweet, but I don't like Oh, him. and Gar dances Captain nothing. Captain Randall can leave. <laughs> nothing that a cup of tea won't fix. That's the, except for those scenes because they're traumatizing. No, I was Same drinking tea while watching that. I had to that. take a break. From I was it. still shook. Azalea was like, "There's too much." Like, I never watched Game of Thrones. We had like, it on, and she was like, "Why are they can they are getting the people that they're they're like they're the family members?" No, we were watching she was so the disgusted. House of the Dragon or something. Ugh. Like you guys put that on because it was supposed to be a little lighter than Ugh. Game of Thrones. But then I was like, "Why is that like 18 year old girl Not flirting?" with her uncle. uncle. Yeah, very perplexing. I was we like, so, it off. I was like, <laughs> it took face. a minute because I was that like, was okay, wait, funny. I couldn't figure out. I was like, either they're not flirting or that's not her uncle, but no, it's both. It was both at the same time. And then it got worse. And then I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not. I am not I watching like, things show that are too upsetting. Get out. I'm mm -hmm. not watching this. Yeah, they're too violent. Why does it have to be too violent? Every like, murder mystery show we've ever watched had at least one or two episodes with some like wackadoodle incest, and I don't care much for that at all. Yeah, it's like Game of Thrones. They're that. like, you know what? I, now I will say Tyrion Lannister did make up for it, but for the for the most part, I would Nothing have to tell. Nothing to make up for that. I would tell Greg. I said, like we'd have to like he'd have to pre-watch it, and then tell me if there was a, an upsetting part coming on so I could go to the bathroom or go <laughs> get a drink or something. So, yeah, why well, do I want to see all that, you know, sister-brother loving? I don't I know. That. That's what weird. What the hell? No. Yeah, that's pass is what I say on that. 
Can't they think of anything else? Why does that have to be shocking? I mean, how come we love all this murder that's that's definitely gentle? I mean, when people are... It is gentle. Definitely Midsummer not. is mostly gentle. Father Brown is extremely tender. Very good for us. Anybody, like, you know, the people that die in that show usually have it coming. And then the murderers <laughs> are usually people that you're like, yeah, he deserves to go oh. to jail. And then, uh, and then everything's good by the end. Yeah, sure. Fix their problems. Call the midwives, but call the midwives always has me ugly crying by the end of it. So I have to, I have that one. I have to ration watch that when I'm in the mood. I saw like one episode with you, and I was like, mm. Vicky thinks you're so adorable. She is adorable. Look at this lovely little daughter. So lovely. Thanks. Yeah, I watch it too, Donna. It's one of my faves. I don't know what it is, but I love watching these dudes in the. You know, they're in their cassock. I love The Rev. Remember The Rev? That was good. We and watched who Branchester. didn't love Branchester? And that was a treat. I didn't like the first preacher. I did. He's I liked all of them. She's, is that I watch it? This is a family-friendly show. Sorry. Family-friendly. They it, know what I'm it. talking about. They do, but still, keep it family-friendly. Yeah. All right, folks, we've been on here for, oh, Kalite, Ancient Aliens. Me and Greg, you guys, you're, you're on. You're basically watching the same shows. It's soaking into my brain. I get that conspiracy theory. All right, Vicky. She says we should just have a Zoom to talk about movies. I'm there with you. We'll draw and talk about movies. And TV shows. We'll have a separate Zoom screen going that's screen sharing to AmazonPrime.com. So you guys can see. And then we will collectively, we'll, we'll share that screen, make it big, so everybody can just, it can be movie night. Everybody it'll can watch be, that. It'll be a movie That's how night. we did it at school. When I w was doing my Zoom classes remote from high school, uh, they did our one of our education classes. We had to watch. Uh, we had to watch Juno. That was cute. That was a good movie. It's but a great movie. The way they did it is they had the Zoom and they shared it and they made you know they had us watch it on our computer screens and that wasn't bad. We can do the same thing with our murder mystery shows. It sounds fun. All right, folks. Well, thank you for joining us. We had a really good time as usual. Pretty and tired. if you're watching our replay, go ahead and if uh, something if you're interested in something, you can just drop us an email and. Um, if you don't hear from me, you can poke me again. Sometimes, you know, things get piled up. So, anyway, we're working through. We're almost caught up with everybody. Everything should go out, but from mid, like Wednesday, we should be completely caught up. So it's a good thing. We were kind of backed up with the trip and having employees we leave. A, so, we had a bunch and, of stuff happen. And then the equipment failure, so. We had like one thing after another causing delays, so. A lot of yeah. delays, so we're, we're starting doing, to get we're caught up. There. We're gonna have a party. It's gonna be a big deal. All right. Oh, no, we don't have. All right, thank you guys. We love all of you, and we hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week. You guys have a great week.